President Uhuru Kenyatta has extended the dusk to dawn curfew for another 21 days. President Kenyatta, who was addressing the nation on the preparedness and initiatives to contain the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the economy, has also extended the cessation of movement in and out of Nairobi Metropolitan and the coastal counties of Mombasa, Kwale and Kilifi. KTN's Jeff Kirui with the details. All well. With Kenya recording new cases of COVID-19 each day, the government continues to tighten its mitigation measures as President Uru Kenyatta announced an extension of the dusk to dawn curfew as well as cessation of movement in the north of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kwale and Kilifi counties for another 21 days. That the cessation of movement into and out of the Nairobi metropolitan area and the counties of Kilifi, Kwale, and Mombasa that are currently in force shall be extended for a further containment period of 21 days. That the nationwide dust to dawn curfew that is currently in force shall also be extended for, the for, the, for a further period of 21 days. President Kenyatta warning of stringent measures should the country continue to record more infection cases. And today we say that if this worrying trend does not reverse, more stringent measures will be taken in, consult in consultation with the respective county governments. The introduction of curfew and cessation of movement in and out of the affected counties were meant to curb the spread of the virus to other parts of the country. The initial stages of implementing the mitigation measures have, however, witnessed challenges. Kenyans have devised ways of beating the government's directive, especially the ban on movement in and out of the affected counties. Some crossing the police checkpoints on foot or by border border, only to board waiting matatus on the other side, beating the very purpose of restricting movement. Wale wachachi, ambao. Wametoa, for example, ugonjwa huu, wametoa ugonjwa huu, hapa Nairobi, wamepeleka mpaka Mandela. Mandela sasa tumefunga. Kwa nini? Sio kwa sababu ugonjwa ulitoka Mandela. Ugonjwa umetoka hapa Nairobi, kulingana na wale ambao walikosa kuti ile amri ambaye tulikuwa tumeweka. Even as Mombasa, we will not hesitate when it gets to a point when we tell you escalate the actions to stringent measures so that our people can listen. Ni aibu kubwa kwa malazima askari wasimame mbele yetu. Ni aibu kubwa kwamba viongozi wa kisiasa ama viongozi ndani ya serikali lazima wawe karibu nasi ndio tuvae mask ama ndio tuoshe mikono. Sisi tuataka kupunguza yale masharti lakini hatutasusia kuongeza masharti kama wenzetu wa Kenya hamutaweza kutii yale ambaye tunaelezwa na wale ambao wanahusika curfew directive on the other hand has witnessed raw police brutality <laughs> officers being accused of enforcing the directives in a chaotic and violent manner which resulted in deaths and injuries <laughs> According to Human Rights Watch, a New York-based human rights watchdog, at least six people were killed by police, <laughs> including a 13-year-old boy who succumbed to a police bullet while playing at the balcony of their home in Kiamaiko Estate in Nairobi. Incidents that prompted the head of state to apologize to Kenyans for excessive use of force by those meant to protect them. And I want to apologize to all Kenyans, maybe for some excesses that were conducted. Or happened. And perhaps to instill fear and discipline in Kenyans to stay indoors during curfew hours, the Ministry of Health directed that those arrested flouting curfew rules will be sent to forced quarantine at their own cost, a decision that has been challenged in court awaiting determination. Jeff, Kirui KT News. The 